All right, so I love all my smart home stuff, all the automations and shortcuts, all that is just freaking awesome, but. Hey Siri, set good night scene. Good night. We turn off the bed light. Did you want to turn off your lights? The bed light. I'm not sure what you mean. Could you rephrase that? The bed light strip. Turn off, see, and then it disappears. It doesn't work. Nope. Sometimes you just need to have a way, a physical way to control your smart home stuff. Enter flick buttons. These cool little buttons that can actually control all kinds of stuff. And with their recent update to support HomeKit, you can now control all of your HomeKit accessories as well. Yes! Today we're gonna to take a closer look and see if this little button is worth adding to your smart home. Plus, I've got a really cool giveaway to tell you about. So stick around to the end to see how you can enter for a chance to win some flick buttons of your own. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos released every Sunday morning right here. So if you've been building onto your smart home like me, it doesn't take long to realize how important it is to still have physical controls for your smart home accessories, especially if you live with other people. Sure, you can use your phone or voice assistance or even automations and shortcuts, but sometimes you just need that simple way to control things, you know, something that's wife approved maybe. Uh, so smart buttons that support HomeKit are great because for one, you're not only bound to you know just one light or accessory. For example, you can set entire scenes with just the push of a button, or take it even further and add some custom scripting or conditions, you know, to really take your HomeKit buttons to the next level. So let's talk about these little buttons right here by Flick. Now, Flick did send me this starter kit here for free, no strings attached, so that I could test them out. Um, and share it with you. As always, you're gonna get my honest opinions and feedback. If I don't like something, I'm gonna let you know. Now you can purchase their starter kit online that comes with one Flick Hub LR and three Flick 2 buttons. It currently costs $159.99 US for this kit. They also sell the Flick 2 Pro kit with one hub and six buttons for $219, as well as a mega kit with one hub, 15 buttons, and an IR transmitter accessory for $399. Now you might've noticed that the kit that they sent me actually has four buttons and a hub. Uh, this is their actually their PR kit, so it's a little different than what's on the website. So again, that starter kit that's on their website has only three buttons. And on that website, you can purchase additional buttons for $29.99 and larger packs that'll save you, you know, a little bit more money per button. They even have a few accessories available like a metal clip that, you know, allows you to attach the button to your apparel or keychains and stuff like that. They have additional sticker sheets for the buttons and that IR accessory that That'll allow you to control your IR accessories with the buttons and the hub. Setup was very easy. I just installed the Flick app, added the hub in the app, and from there I was able to add my first Flick button to the hub. I changed the name to Wife Bedside since this will go over on the wife's bedside table eventually. Then you'll see there's a little toggle that says Add to HomeKit. I tap that and I'm immediately told that I need to update the firmware to get that HomeKit support. So once the update is complete, I go back into the button, tap Add to HomeKit again. It says that first I need to pair the hub with HomeKit. So I click Proceed, allow Flick to access my home data, OK. And now we see that familiar card pop up asking us to add the Flick hub to my home. Tap Add to Home, and then I can choose the location of the bridge, tap Continue, and now that's it. Now the Flick Hub has been added to my home. Now you'll see if I try to edit the button's actions in the Flick app, it says I can't and that I need to use the Home app. 
since we're using these with HomeKit now. So I'm gonna open the Home app, go to my bedroom where I placed that hub, and now we'll see our new flick button. I can open it up and rename it here. And you can see when I press the button, it is indeed working. You can also see the response time here. And if I open the button settings, again, I can choose an action for that single press. I'll go ahead and make it turn my bedroom light on, just as another example to show you that response time. And as you can see, it's pretty responsive here so far. So as you saw, you can add a button to the hub. When you do that, you then have the option to add it to HomeKit. Once you add it to HomeKit, it's pretty straightforward. Just like many other HomeKit buttons, you then have the option to configure a single press, double press, or a long press within HomeKit. But if you don't add it to HomeKit, then you have the ability to configure and do one of many other things. You can trigger Alexa routines, control Chromecast, your Harmony Hub, IFTT. You can even turn it into a doorbell or a buzzer by using the 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the Flick Hub to play back audio. So there is a ton of integrations and things you can do with these, um, more than I really have time to cover today. So I will put links to everything below so you can explore all the integrations and things that this thing can do outside of HomeKit. In addition to adding a button to the hub, you can also choose to add a button to your phone. This will work on Android or iOS. This gives you more options to control your phone, media, apps, all kinds of stuff. And since this is connected to your phone this way, you can actually take this button with you anywhere and trigger these, you know, any of these actions. You're not necessarily tied to just your home when you're using it this way. And as if that wasn't enough, they also have a Mac app. So you sign into the app on your Mac and then you can even pair your flick buttons with your Mac to control apps and other things there on your Mac. So these things are pretty versatile. They can actually do a whole lot more than just control your HomeKit accessories. Just some more examples, you can control Keynote on your Mac, Keyboard Maestro, Spotify, Slack, Sonos, I think, uh, Sonos speakers. Um, you can make internet requests via web hooks and you know, the list just goes on and on. You can even configure a button press to perform multiple actions with one press. So that's pretty neat. That kind of reminds me of, you know, like series shortcuts, you know, something that we talk about sometimes here on this channel. And out of all of these integrations, quite possibly the most useful integration uh, and feature of all of this, let me get my flick button right here. Ready? I mean, can we just end the video here? What else do you need? Okay, so let's talk about specs. You may want to know how these buttons actually connect. Well, they connect via Bluetooth 5.0, whether they are connected to your hub or your phone or your Mac. Uh, if you use the hub, they can connect via Bluetooth to the hub and that hub is what connects to the internet, giving you that remote access. Now the hub can actually be connected via ethernet or Wi-Fi using either your 2.4 or five gigahertz Wi-Fi band. On the hub, we have a port for the Flick IR accessory if you choose to use one, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, your ethernet port, the micro USB port for power, a status LED, and a little pinhole for resetting the hub. Now, many Bluetooth devices aren't super fast and don't have great range, but it's worth noting that Bluetooth 5.0 is faster and you know has about twice the range at least than previous generations. They actually say that Flick uses a proprietary implementation of Bluetooth low energy to communicate with the receiver, whatever that means. They say line of sight range for these buttons is up to 200 meters and indoor range is up to 50 meters when connected to the hub. They claim up to three years of battery life and they use a CR2032 coin battery. It has a little three colored LED on it. You see a little green flash each time you press the button. It has a super strong adhesive that is supposedly reusable. They actually say you can just wash off the adhesive uh, with water and rub it a little bit and it will return to full stickiness. That's pretty cool. 
Now beware, they do say that removing the adhesive might damage the surface of whatever you're attaching it to. And it also has a really nice tactile clicky feel. I don't know if you can hear that when you push the button, which is um, really nice. Overall, the design of these are probably one of my favorite things about it. You can customize them with you know, some of the stickers, which is also really cool and something I like a lot. So now that you know everything about these buttons, you might be wondering how I feel about them personally, maybe the pros and cons after I've used them here in my house. Well, I'll be honest, when I first heard that they were Bluetooth, I immediately was like, all right, I'm not gonna get too excited. You know, Bluetooth is usually a little bit more laggy and just doesn't have great range. But with that said, I was pretty impressed by these, uh, both, both the responsiveness and the range. Now, I live in not a huge house, it's probably around 2200 square feet or so and um, I tested this thing throughout the house and I didn't have any connection issues with it as far as being able to reach the hub or losing that connection and I tried it you know on different sides of the house and even on different floors they do use that Bluetooth low energy 5.0 so that must be making a difference here you know, typically I'd probably prefer to use a smart button that connects via Zigbee or something similar because I think it's just gonna be the most responsive, which is important, you know, for a button. But like I said, I was pleasantly surprised by the performance of these. You know, for the most part, they were very responsive. I did notice sometimes, you know, it would take an extra second or two for the button to execute a home kit command or a scene that I had set up. Um, here, I'll show you in this example right here, uh, I have a single press to turn on my relax scene and a double press to turn on my movie time scene. You can just see it changes the colors here. So occasionally there would be a little slight lag, but a lot of the time it was really fast and responsive. Another thing to consider here is the price. Now these aren't the cheapest buttons you can buy, However, it's not uncommon for a standalone HomeKit button to cost around $50 by itself. So, you know, I sort of kind of put these in that mid to high range as far as cost goes. You can get some a little cheaper, I think maybe like Acara buttons or even the Philips Hue ones, but don't forget that you still need to factor in the cost for a hub for those buttons as well. And the fact is these things can just do so much more than your typical home kit or smart home button. With all those integrations like controlling your phone or even your Mac and the different apps and stuff, you know, these are just way more versatile outside of just controlling your smart home stuff. And while we're on that note, I did notice that they have an ideas page on their website where you can submit ideas and requests for new integrations. You can even vote up others requests. You know, I really like this. To me, that shows that they're listening to their customers and continuing to create new integrations and improving their product. Now the buttons themselves, you know, they're just awesome. I may have to go as far to say they're my favorite HomeKit button yet, at least as far as the design goes. Just because that tactile feel and the minimal design of this, you know, it also has this really nice, like soft touch, white matte finish. Just a great design. I really love that you can customize these and you know, so they make sense for your guests and family and stuff as well in the house. So uh, they get an A plus for the design. One thing I really don't like that much is that they don't give you any of the stickers in the standard starter kit. I got some in this PR kit. They do offer the additional ones that you can purchase separately for about $5. But you know, they probably could have just included those in the box, that would have been nice. I am happy that they at least included the little beer icon for me. I'm pretty sure they included that one just for me. But really, other than that, I'm very happy with them. I think if you really like the look and design, they might just be worth the cost especially if you're interested in taking advantage of some of the you know many other integrations that you just don't get with other smart home buttons. But as far as controlling your smart home accessories and scenes, I really do love these things if you can get past the cost and they're wife approved. What else can you ask for? So I did mention a giveaway in the beginning of this. Flick is actually doing something really cool right now to promote more positivity online. This is a big giveaway. They said they were inspired by a comment on one of Paul Hibbert's videos, who's another smart home YouTuber, and they wanted to do more to promote positivity, joy, and happiness on social media. 
Yes, thank you. Kudos to Flick for doing something like that and just trying to promote positivity. I'm all about sharing the love and we frankly need more of that. So 10 winners are gonna be chosen to win a three pack of Flick buttons worth $79.99. And here's all you have to do to enter. Just spread the love, that's it. So what I'm gonna do is link a few other YouTubers that inspire me in some way down below. Just go to the videos that I link below and share a positive comment and put hashtag share the love in your comment. That's it, no need to mention Flick or the giveaway or anything else, just share the love. And if you really wanna share some more love, do the same thing down in the comments on this video also. I love hearing from you guys and reading all your comments each week. With this giveaway, Flick says they hope to inspire sharing selflessness, unconditional joy, and positivity. Uh, you know, so many of you guys do that already, so thank you so much for your support and watching these little videos that I make each week. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for new home kit videos every Sunday. And if you really want to support this channel, consider hitting that join button below to become a channel member. You get access to some perks like joining our members only home kit community over on Discord, early access to new videos, and more. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see y'all later. Turn off the bed light. Okay, which room? Theory. Which stock are you looking for? You <laughs> he said fur. Which stock are you looking for? Sorry, right, I'm done. No.